Um, actually, I was thinking as we were sitting here, because we come from a science center, uh, where interactivity and hands-on and physical activity is quite important. And we've been sitting down for almost like at least two days now. And we would definitely not think of that as the best way of learning where we come from. Um, so I'm trying to get up and give you a new perspective on, on this. Uh, anyways, um, we're gonna, um, we were trying to answer the question, so what's the state of the art of uh, RI in Denmark? Which is quite difficult because it's, it's a very diverse picture as it probably is in every hub. Uh, and we decided that we wanted to demonstrate it with uh, two examples. Um, yeah. Uh, and actually the first example is from Experimentarium itself, which is the Pulse project. Just gonna figure out how this works. Okay. Which is an interactive exhibition about health promotion. So this is about getting families to move. And um, the key uh, term in both the projects that we're gonna introduce today is uh, involvement. So the kind of involvement that we have in this one is that we have user involvement. We take the users that are supposed to use this exhibit um, in the future and ask them to co-develop the exhibition with us. And um, normally at a Danish science center like Experimentarium, we're located in a very um, wealthy area and quite often it's people from that socioeconomic status that come to our science center. And probably most of our products are developed to that uh, target group as well. So in this case, we tried to involve people from different socioeconomic settings. Um, so we had two different areas. We had the area that we're usually in and we had an area of people uh, who were from a less well-off area. Yeah. And uh, what we did was a number of different activities with them where we used design games in order to involve them. And uh, we used, uh, we did some uh, regular workshops and we did some mise en songs, which is a kind of like a little theater play where people have to play out, like how do they imagine their future practice of doing these things? So how does that work with their, their uh, how they normally um, how much workout they do, how they exercise, like what's the health uh, practices in um, uh, normally. And all of this uh, goes through like iterative stages and it ends up in the final exhibition design. And we actually just opened this exhibition uh, a few weeks ago and we had the users who were involved in this coming to our exhibition and um, and they actually said that it was quite funny to see it recognize some of the points that they had uh, in the final design. Uh, and the interesting thing about this project is that, oh, you can see it here. Um, so the, it's a design game up there. We, like, we created very um, concrete uh, involvement for people in order to participate. So they had to feel like they were there physically in order to establish, because we have one language and we have one way of, of uh, developing things that of course they don't know, they're familiar with their own reality, not ours. So in order to kind of put them into our reality and help us design things, we made it very physical and concrete so they had these little figures that they could play with and, um, and play it out. And uh, yeah, today it's, it's finished and, and, and people are using it. So we have this exhibit that uh, are made for and uh, by, the, by the users. And the interesting thing about this project is that, as you said in the beginning, like sometimes you do RI without knowing that it's actually RI. So there's elements of RI in this, but in our organization, in Experimentarium, it's not something that we've been doing a lot before. Um, so we're starting slowly to do this, but it's not institutionalized. It's just something that now there's a couple of uh, people who are aware of this and who know the methods of doing it, who knows the mindset. And, and that's actually a really good beginning. We're trying, and we're starting to see also with this project how it kind of emerges into the rest of organization, how, how all of a sudden the words are not so uh, different and not so foreign so as, as they used to be. Um, so I think this is a really good, great example of, of leading by example in order to understand a really difficult mindset. And we have another practice from uh, Kauline, our Yes, I have an example uh, from business, and it's called Blueprint for Change program. 
it is a program designed to communicate the sustainable business strategy of the um, Danish funded uh, global healthcare uh, company Novo Nordisk uh, and they work mainly in uh, diabetes treatment and I talked to the program director who helped me understand uh, how um, what the aims are of this program and the outcomes and also how it relates to RI and uh, he told me that Novo Nordisk is, uh, has been striving for a long time to be in the vanguard of responsible, uh, re no, responsible and, and uh, sustainable business conduct. And um, therefore, they, uh, in 2004, they uh, implemented um, a sustainable business strategy uh, based on the triple bottom line business principle, which uh, states that they as a company must consider all their actions to be both socially, financially and environmentally responsible. Um, but it turned out that their shareholders uh, got a little bit worried with this sustainable business um, take. So they found out that they needed to communicate this better and uh, how this sustainable business strategy could actually help um, create value for the company. Um, so they, in 2013, they um, designed uh, a communication program called Blueprint for Change. And um, in the program, it's, uh, it's uh, described how they all their thoughts and reflections about how this can help create what they call shared value, which is a more like uh, collab collaborative um, way of thinking about creating value. And it's not only uh, economical value, but also social value. And um, it, it's very concerned with how uh, a company affects society. Um, and as, as an extension of uh, this program, they also created uh, a series of case studies where they um, examine how they, as a uh, company uh, create value in the praxis through this value creation. Um, and the main, like the majority of these cases uh, are central around uh, their diabetes treatment where they work as consultants for, for countries. For example, they go in and they, uh, they map the stakeholder needs uh, through interviews with doctors and patients and societies. And um, then uh, it's described uh, how the, the value is, is created and uh, through, for example, improvement of life quality or better uh, medical practice, but also how this helps them as a company to, uh, to create value uh, through, for example, opening up of new markets of undiagnosed diabetics. Um, so, oh, shit. <laughs> um, so what, and they have also done some other case studies about their CO2 reduction strategy and um, how clinical research create different kinds of value. I'll not go into that any further. I just wanted to say that um, the program director told me that this um, has actually become a very valuable tool for them in order to understand their own uh, praxis and the drivers of their shared value creation and also help them realize how they can optimize this value creation and then they're very interested in sharing this with uh, all their stakeholders, um, also their shareholders, of course. But uh, they also want to inspire others. So, so this is very important for Novo Nordisk that what, what started out as a program to communicate to shareholders actually has become a very valuable tool for them as a company um, in regards of being more reflected and uh, better at uh, creating shared value. Um, yeah, do you have any final comments? Yeah, what is interesting when things are coming together, like when we're looking into the different practices, our own as well as others, when we're looking into a big company like this. Um, so what are the differences? Why, like what, even though both projects has a strong focus on involvement, uh, we see different motivations. There's responsibility at the Blueprints for Change, which is quite important, whereas in Pulse, actually, the goal wasn't responsibility. It was just uh, transforming our visitors. So that to, uh, took access in, in the kind of practice that, that we have. There's different degrees of institutional change in relation to responsibility. Uh, so Novo Nordisk, the big company, has seen like a purpose of, of doing RRI. It, 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 it's ac they ac actually see economic value, whereas at Experimentarium- One minute left. At Experimentarium, we still find that it's, it's something that, that um, takes resources rather than adding something a lot to the processes that we usually do. So the mindset is very different there. And we have different uh, narratives about how we talk about it and how well this narrative is distributed in the organization. We of course has, have a 
a huge uh, hub strategy for how we do things. Some of you have seen on Basecamp that we have talked about going to Roskilde Festival, uh, which is a huge musical festival where we're going to involve hub members in uh, developing the, um, the products and, or the posters and the communication design for the, um, for the festival. And if you have, have uh, any questions about that, please, uh, please just find any of us. We're a huge group uh, today because we felt that it would be good to meet all of you and see all of you and talk all of you about this important topic. So just um, um, say hello to us or uh, email me and, um, and we'll talk more. Thank you.